What's up everybody? So a few weeks ago, I made these tower speakers and I mean, they're great. I love them and uh, I'll include a link in the video description to the full build video for those in case you wanna check them out. Anyways, when I built those, they replaced these, my old bookshelf speakers. So what I would like to do today is take these and repurpose them as a rear channel. That way I can finally live my lifelong dream of having a proper surround sound setup. But there's just one problem. There's not really anywhere here in my living room set up where I can put them. So today, we're gonna build a set of speaker stands for them. But the fun doesn't stop there. When I was doing the research for this video, I came across some interesting articles. As it turns out, there's quite a few people in the audiophile community who think that properly designed speaker stands will actually make a set of speakers sound better. And there's a whole number of different ways that you can achieve that. So I tried to take as many of those as I could and integrate them into the design for these speaker stands. So today we are going to build some clean, elegant speaker stands and see if they can make these speakers sound any better. But I'm pretty skeptical of these claims. I don't think they're gonna work. But hey, I would love to be wrong. So let's head to the shop and see if I am. All right, so here we are in the shop. We got a lot of new stuff to do today, but I think let's start the day with an old fan favorite, and we are gonna carve some walnut over on my x -Carp Pro. Over the next 20 minutes or so, we are going to cut the tops and the bottoms of our speaker stands out of these two pieces. As with all of my recent x -Carve related projects, I'm gonna make the files for these speaker stands available for free over on the Inventables website, just in case any of you guys wanna follow along at home. Not only did I have the X-Carve Pro cut out the general shapes of the speaker stands, but I also had it mortise out some mounting points and this big rectangular area that's the same size as the footprint of my speakers. That'll be an important detail for improving sound quality later, but we're not quite there yet. I think we're done. Let's pull these guys out of here. I think that just about concludes the woodworking portion of this video. Oh, there we go that out of there. Try not to break everything. Yeah, look at these guys. All right, let's go do some metal working. I gotta say, it's nice to be cutting metal again. I feel like it's been a while since I got to incorporate some steel into one of my builds. To start, I cut some one inch and half inch square tube steel to length, and then I cut a bunch of smaller pieces of flat bar, gathered it all up, and headed over to the welding table. Okay, so here's the plan now that we've got everything cut. We are going to take our long tubes here, which as you may have already guessed is how we're gonna link the top and the bottom pieces of these speaker stands. We're gonna take the smaller tubes and we're gonna put them inside of the bigger tubes. And the reason we're gonna do this is to just give ourselves a nice little channel inside the tube so that we can run speaker wire from the floor up to the speakers in a nice discreet way. Now, why couldn't I just run the speaker wire through the big tube? Well, you know what, I would tell you, but that kind of ruins the surprise for later in the video. So we'll just talk about that in a little bit. Oh, and also these little pieces that I cut are going to be flanges that will allow me to screw these to the top and bottom. So with all that being said, let's get this stuff welded up. The first thing I did was secure the smaller tube inside of the bigger tube with some tack welds. Then I completely sealed off the bottom of both shafts with a ton of welding wire. Not exactly the most graceful approach, but a little angle grinder action cleaned it all up and made it look reasonably presentable. After that, I started welding my flat bar mounting tabs in position with the help of my magnetic welding blocks. If you're watching this and you're at all interested in learning to weld, I highly recommend that you give it a shot. It's a ton of fun, and I actually made a whole intro to MIG welding video that I will link down in the video description. It should give you all the info you need to get started. Look at that. These are now done. So let's take them outside and give them a quick grind. Clean them up a little bit. Out back behind the shop, I did my best to smooth out all of my welds and then clean up any sharp edges left over from cutting earlier. Normally, getting into all of these inside corners is kind of a pain, but I recently started using curved flat paddle discs and now it's way easier. So I'll make sure to include some links to those as well in the video description. Then it was back inside to drill some holes in the mounting flanges. 
I used a series of progressively larger drill bits to make the job as easy as possible. I also countersunk the screw holes in the bottom flanges so that my screws would sit flush inside of them. Then it was back outside for a quick paint job where I sprayed on a few coats of satin black. And now it's time for a confession. Remember earlier how I said that I was done with the woodworking? Yeah, that was kind of a lie. Sorry about that. I still had a few steps left to do. First, I chamfered the walnut pieces for no other reason than I thought it looked really cool. I also sanded them and laid on the same finish that I originally used on the speakers so that everything matched nicely. Or at least it will match nicely once the stands get exposed to the sun for a little bit. Pro tip, walnut actually tends to change color pretty dramatically with UV exposure, so be patient if you're trying to match two different pieces. All right, now we can finally do a little bit of assembly. Thanks to some careful planning earlier, this part was actually pretty easy. It was just a matter of slotting the steel into the pockets that the X-Carve mortised out earlier and screwing them in position. I also spray painted the screws so that they would match the rest of the metal. So I know we kind of breeze through the construction of these stands, but what we're here to test today is whether or not these techniques and materials can make speaker stands that make speakers actually sound better. So with that in mind, let's move on to installing our first kind of special feature of these speaker stands that's supposed to make them sound better. And uh, it also happens to be the one that I'm the most skeptical of. Let me show you. This is regular old aquarium sand. Really, you can use any sand for this application. So what we're gonna do is we are going to drop it down into the hollow cavity inside of this metal tube that we created earlier. And the thinking here is pretty straightforward. By adding sand to your stands, you're making them heavier and thus more stable and less likely to rattle around. If the audio files online are to be believed, this should help to tighten up bass response and has the added bonus of making your stands less likely to tip over. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. Too much. Vibrate the whole thing and uh, you'd be surprised when you vibrate it how much it goes down. In retrospect, I do wish that I used a slightly larger metal tube so that I could fit more sand into them, but I still managed to cram about two and a half or three pounds of sand into each one. And I should also note that you don't really have to use sand. Anything small and dense will do the job. Some companies even sell premium audiophile grade sand for maximum sound quality. All right, so there we go. Two speaker stands completely filled with sand. Will it make a difference? I don't know, we'll find out in the testing phase. For now though, let's move on to our next sound improving feature. So this one, I'm less skeptical of. In fact, I'm actually pretty confident that it will make at least a very small difference. What we're gonna do is cut up this foam pad and we are going to add it to the recessed area on the top of the speaker stand. This step is just basic isolation. Speakers sound best when you're hearing just the speakers and these foam pads should help to keep the speakers vibrations from transferring down into the speaker stands. I actually have my desktop speakers at home on foam blocks for much the same reason. However, unlike my desk setup, this one should look a lot cleaner. Once the speakers are in place, the foam will be completely covered and basically invisible. So we got our foam in, we got our sand in, and now it's time to add the last feature to these speaker stands, the feet. These cute little gold spiky feet things. Let me tell you about it. These are probably the feature that I am genuinely the most curious about myself. People swear by this spiky little feet thing. So the way they work is the spiky foot goes on the bottom of your speaker stand, well, four of them will, and then you put these gold plates on the floor and they kind of interface something like that. The interesting thing about these speaker spikes is that there's a lot of conflicting information online about them. Some people think they work by isolating your speakers from the floor. They'll say something like the incredibly small contact area of the spike limits the amount of vibrations that can pass through them. And then other people will claim almost the complete opposite and say they work by connecting your speakers to the floor and providing a more stable footing, especially on carpet. Personally, I think both sides are just kind of full of it and what these really are are cool looking leveler feet. And honestly, I'm fine with that because I do really like how they look and they only cost like 20 bucks. You know, I really wish that they screwed on instead of just having these double-sided tape connections. I mean, sure, the double-sided tape's convenient, but 
I worry that in like two, three years, these are just gonna fall off. Might have to modify them in the future, we'll see. Well, they definitely look sweet, but do they actually improve sound quality? I don't know, let's take them home, find out. All right, so here we are back at home. I have the speakers and the speaker stands set up next to the TV. Now, this is gonna be their final location. Like I said earlier in the video, these are going to be my rear channels. However, I figure for testing purposes, probably a little bit easier if they're just front and center. So here's the test setup. I have a microphone on top of this tripod that's about six feet away from the speakers. We are going to play a sample song with the speakers on top of their new stands. Then we're gonna take the speakers off the stands and put them on some non-acoustically designed furniture. Play the same song again, record that. And then finally, as kind of a control, we'll take the speakers off stands altogether and just put them on the floor and record the same song there. Oh, and I will adjust the height of the microphone to match the height of the speakers. That way there's no directional aberrations or anything like that. All right, sound good? Let's get to it. So what do you guys think? Can you hear any difference at all between the different setups? Before I go and share my own opinion and potentially color yours, I want everybody to just pause the video real quick and go down to the comments and let me know if you could hear any difference at all, no matter how big or small. Okay, you done? So my opinion is that I didn't really hear much of any difference at all, if I'm being completely honest. But I was also setting up between takes, so I didn't get to hear them side by side. So what I'm actually gonna do is go over to my office, dump all this footage and give things a closer look and see if there's any little discrepancies I can pick up on. So let's go do that. <sighs> okay, so upon further review, you know what, there does seem to be some very small difference there. I can hear differences when switching between the clips, but it's very, very minute. And also, if you got me to do a blind test of which one of these sound clips was the one on the speaker stands, I don't think I could give you an accurate answer even after reviewing these clips for like 20 minutes. So, was it all worth it? I mean, maybe. I've said this before, but I am not an audiophile and I also don't have the world's best hearing. So there's a chance that these changes are pretty significant and they're just below my perception floor. And also it didn't take that much time to fill the stands with sand, lay out some foam mat and then attach the funky feet to them. Plus, I really like how those feet look regardless of whether or not they're functional. And I also had a lot of fun researching all the things I could add to these stands and then incorporating them into the design. So if I had to do it all again, I think I would do it very similarly. But, and this is a rather large but, if you're trying to decide between a set of speaker stands to make your existing speakers sound better or just getting newer, better speakers, I would go that route 100% of the time. This was a fun project, but the cost benefit ratio from a sound quality perspective is absolutely horrendous. But then again, I didn't really make these speaker stands for sound quality. I mean, that was just kind of a nice afterthought. I really built them because I wanted to add those speakers as rear channels and finally live that surround sound life. So let's go do that. Oh, hey, cat toy. There you go, Bing. Luckily, I had the good sense to vacuum under here before I started this. Oh, how did they get so tangled so quickly? Oh, that is more like it. I now have a full 5.1 surround sound setup here in my living room. This is something that I have been wanting to do for a long time, but really, I was just worried that it would be too much of a mess of wires. But honestly, I don't think this is so bad. So the wires come out of the back of the receiver, go around the corner. This is really the only spot where they're exposed and just for a little bit, then under the couch, and then up the two speaker stands seamlessly. 
And on that note, I think this is the perfect place to end this video because I really want to try out some surround sound games and some surround sound movies. So thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, consider becoming a Patreon supporter like these five folks here, or honestly, something as simple as just hitting the like button, commenting, or subscribing can make a huge difference. I will include some links to all the products I use down in the video description. And I think that's it for me. So I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.